Hello everyone and welcome back to my new channel, Tech Tutor. My name is Ryan and today we'll be talking about Docker. So what is Docker? Docker is a tool that you use and it helps you with virtualization and containers. But what does that mean exactly? Basically, a container is a packaged piece of software. You can spin it up, you can spin up multiple containers, run them in what is a Docker network, and it helps you spin these things up and down, get started with them quickly. You know, if you wanted to bring up a database, such as MongoDB or Postgres, you're gonna have to download the software, the drivers, everything, uh, go through the setup, but Docker makes it easy. For example, if you want to download a Postgres uh, database, you could put the, Im the image name. There is a repository called Docker Hub, and on Docker Hub, you can pull down the Postgres image, It'll already be all pre-configured in the container, and all you got to do is put it in your, your file to, or download the, the image name. There's different ways to do this, we'll go over this in the video, but basically the way I do it is I put it in what's known as a Docker Compose file, and then I'll download it, and there's different configurations you can put on it, and basically this allows you to spin up that Postgres database right away. You want to try it out, now you can, and so we'll get into that. But to get into that, you're going to need to do two things. You're going to want to download Docker, which I'll put a link in the description for that. And the other thing is to be able to help you kind of visualize what you've done and the fact that you've downloaded a Postgres database, we'll also utilize another free tool called dBeaver. So let's get into it. All right, so let's get started with Docker. Basically, you're going to go to docker.com slash get started. Again, I'll put this link in the bottom in the description. And then you're going to download whichever version applies to your computer, whether it's the Windows, Mac, or Linux version. After that, we're also going to download dBeaver. So go to dBeaver.io. And then after you're done downloading both of those, come back here again, and then we're going to go ahead and create what is known as a Docker Compose file. So to create the Docker Compose file, you can use a uh, program I like to use, which is called Notepad++, but Notepad will do just fine on Windows or whatever other text editor you'd like to use, and you're going to create a file that looks like this. So basically, for the Docker Compose, you're going to tell it what version of Docker Compose you want to use. So for this particular case, we're going to end up using version 3.1, and then we're going to talk about the services that we want to pull in the image. So this particular image is called Postgres. Again, this image lives on Docker Hub. We're going to say restart always, which basically means that if for whatever reason it fails, it'll automatically restart. And the Postgres password is the password that I'm going to assign to the Postgres database. Again, this is a configuration value for the Postgres image. I'll also show you how I figured this out, where all the settings go. Again, it's on Docker Hub. So I'll just make the password of this database tech tutor. And then again, you need this next part. This next part is ports. So basically what this is, is it's saying that port 5432, which is the default port for Postgres, it's going to be exposed from the container out to your, uh, your computer's network. So you have to expose it from one port in the container to an external port. You could actually change this, but for simplicity, we have no need to do that. You just need to expose it out of the port into your, uh, your computer's network, so that way you could point to it with dBeaver. So again, it'll just be 5432 from the container to the external network 5432. All right, and now real quick, I'd like to show you what I meant by the different environment variables you could pass to this container coming from Docker Hub. So again, if you go to hub.docker.com and then you go to slash underscore Postgres, this is just the location of the Postgres container on Docker Hub. You could read through the documentations here and it tells you a little bit of everything. Again, the Postgres password that I'm going to be using. You could also set a user if you're not going to use the default user. You can rename the database, a few different pieces in here. You know, just look through this if you have more interest on digging deeper, but for our simple example, we'll skip that. Again, go to this list link, I'll put it in the description. It'll be there for you if you want, or get curious and you want to dig a little deeper. So after you have created this Docker Compose file, and then you will save it, uh, how we're gonna run it is you're going to go to the command prompt of wherever you've saved it, and then you'll say Docker Compose up or Docker Compose down. So well, let's go over that next. All right, so if you've saved it somewhere, the quick way to get to it in Windows, if you're trying to figure out how do I open the command prompt, wherever this file is, is you'll see here on Windows, it has the full file path, this PC, desktop, 
I've got in a folder called YouTube, then under another folder called Postgres. And then I had saved this file, which is now showing up as docker-compose.yml YAML file. So to go to it in the command prompt, just go ahead and click here and then type CMD, push enter. And now you'll see here that it actually opened it up in the file path all the way to that folder and to the file. And if I type DIR for directory, you'll see what's in that directory. It's got the Docker Compose file. So let's go ahead and spin that up. And this is only after you've downloaded Docker successfully. If you have issues with that, um, let me know in the comments. I'll help you get it started. But assuming that you've got Docker up, you could try this to make sure that Docker's working. So just try the command docker ps. You'll see that it says there's no containers running. And one more thing before I forget, if you are running Docker on Windows, you have to enable virtualization. Usually this will in, uh, require you to go to the BIOS of your computer. There's some different steps depending on your motherboard to get there. If you want, if you want help with this, put some comments below and I'll be happy to help. All right, so moving on, if you type docker compose up dash D, which means that you're running it uh, detached. Basically, if you ran it like this, which I'll do real quick, it's actually going to basically take up your command prompt. And then the only way to get out of this is to stop it. So if you did run it this way, it's totally fine. Um, you know, if you want to get out of this, control C. But let's do it detached so that way we can also do other things with the command prompt if we like. So docker compose up dash D. You'll see that it started the container. And then you'll type, if you want to see that it's running, docker ps. And now you'll see that it is running. It's running on the port 5432. It shows you the arrow to 5432, which again means that it exposed it to the external network port of 5432. This allows us to connect to it from the uh, dBeaver application. So we'll use that next. So that way you can see how you can connect to this image you just created and create a database. Um, create tables, delete tables, etc. So let's move on to that next. All right, so after you've downloaded dBeaver as well, you will open up dBeaver, and then in order to connect to this Postgres database that you've spun up, you will use this arrow key. You'll click on it, you'll say Postgres. We left almost all the defaults except for the password, so these defaults are fine. Localhost is what it's gonna run on by default. 5432, the database name is Postgres. The username is also Postgres. We put TechTutor as the password, so go ahead and type that in now. TechTutor. To test that you are successfully able to connect to your database, click the test connection. Looks like I put the wrong password. There we go, and now you see that I connected successfully. So you'll click finish. I now have a second connection to the same database, but really we'll use the one I already had. And let's take a look at the sample script that I created. So if you want to learn SQL, uh, I can have some more videos to deep dive into SQL, but I'll just get you started with some basic uh, SQL file or SQL scripts. So this particular file I have here will create a table. It will select the records from that table, if there are any, and it will insert a row into that table and you can even delete that table. So, to create the table, you'll use the script create table accounts. The uh, ID, these fields here are the names of the columns. So user ID, the type is serial, username, the type's varchar. Uh, primary key is another thing. These are all keywords that SQL specifically understands. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, let me know. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. All right, so we'll run this script so that way we create our table accounts. Control enter, we'll do that after you highlight it. All right, now you see down here that it has created that table. And now let's go ahead and see what's in that table using this select script, control enter. There's nothing there, but you can see these columns, user ID, username, password, email, created on, last logon. So login, sorry. Then after that is very important when you are doing the insert script that you use single quotes and not double quotes when you want to put a word in there for a varchar. So we're going to insert into accounts for these field values. And this is the values we're putting in those field names. So control enter again. Current timestamp, this is again a reserved word in SQL. This will allow us to put the current time into that timestamp field for created on. 
and, or sorry, for last logon, created on actually will create by default because of this default create timestamp. And this default creates timestamp will force it to automatically anytime a new record is created, put the current time that that record was created. Again, when you're doing the insert, you can actually do something like that's very similar. And this is another way to put the current time into another field. So you, you, you may use it, you may not, it's up to you. Two different ways to do it. And you can also put a whole different time if you had something that was not actually meant to be the current timestamp. We can get into that later. So now let's do select from the accounts table. Now you'll see that the values that I put in there are there. Let's go back to that. So we have the value one, some user, bad password, some user dot, some dot user at example.com, 2020-1024, so this is again the created on date, the last login will be the same, and let's switch back to this view again, it's a little easier to see. And so after this, what you can do actually is you can get rid of this accounts table, so you can do drop table accounts. You won't want to do this in a production environment. You might start deleting entire tables, production table, uh, database. Don't do this. This is just for like your local testing. I would not suggest doing this in any sort of production environment unless you're absolutely sure you don't want that table. But now if we try to select from that table, you'll see that that table does not exist. But let's go ahead and create it one more time because now I'll show you the other way you can get rid of this Postgres database. So you see that table still exists. And now, what we'll do is we'll actually use Docker to wipe this away and then we'll start fresh. So it's another thing you can do with Docker. All right, so if you remember the command prompt, we'll go back to the command prompt again. And this, there's actually two commands. So one we'll do first, which will not wipe your database. This is important if you want to keep working, is Docker compose and then just do stop. You'll see that it stopped the container and if you try to connect to it over here in dbeaver, it's actually not going to work because the database has been stopped, so it's not running on those ports. And if you want to bring it back, because let's say you want to continue development where you left off, let's go ahead, come back in here, and you'll say docker compose up-d again. Now it's running again, and that database is still there, so you could run the script and you'll see that that table still exists. But if you wanted to wipe it out, you don't want to have to run all the drop table scripts or any other way of just deleting data, you can wipe out this database completely. So if you want to do that, docker compose down dash b. What this means is it's wiping out that volume that's created. So there's a default volume location if you don't specify one in docker. And so that default volume, it's on your hard disk and saying down dash v means destroy it, get rid of it. So down dash v. You'll see that it removes it, removes that network it created, and it is gone. So now, if we say docker compose up dash D again, now when you come in here and you try to select star from accounts, it's going to tell you that that table does not exist because you just wiped it out completely. So this is another way to uh, wipe out your database, bring it back. You know, you like I said, you could use this drop tables accounts if you wanted just to get rid of a table without wiping your entire, entire database. But there's different ways to use Docker. I hope this is a very easy way for you to get started, to spin up a Postgres database, check it out, and just let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to know any more about anything specifically, whether it's Postgres, SQL, Docker. Let me know what you thought of this video, if you want more videos like this, or you know, I'm gonna go back to Java soon, most likely. And just let me know in the comments below what you want to hear about. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe and let me know about future topics you want to hear about. Again, I'm happy to help. This is my new channel, Tech Tutor. I hope you like it. I'll see you next time.